Odds are, when you're creating a responsive search ad, you're sending users to a website or a landing page. Well, did you know that there's a way where you can collect first party information directly from the search ad? I'm not talking about the asset or ad extension. This goes beyond that. You can tell Google to show a lead form every single time instead of sending them to a page. So in this video, we'll show you how to set that up. First, we'll go and see how you can set up a lead form. Then we'll confirm conversion tracking from that lead form. And then we'll show you how to actually set it up within a search campaign. Before you can attach a lead form to a responsive search ad, you have to have a lead form created. Makes sense, right? So in order to do that, go to assets and assets again. I know this is your asset or ad extension area of Google ads, but these are where lead forms live. Find your option. And if you're already using them as assets for your search ads, you're good to go. If you're brand new to this area and you need to create a new one, click on the blue plus button. And here's where you can start building out your asset. Now I'm not gonna dive too deep into this because I already have another video talking about lead form assets. You could check it out here. That video will dive a lot deeper into the options you have when building out a form. For now, we're just gonna go through it pretty quick. So I'll create a new one. And this is one of the few cases where I would actually go and select a campaign. I've never run an account where they wanted every single search ad to go to a lead form. And if so, I'm still breaking out my campaigns to target different themes. And in my opinion, if you're changing out your ad copy to match the themes of a campaign, then you should probably create different copy and messages for your lead forms for each campaign. So I just selected one. I'm not going to save this. But if you've run lead forms before in paid social, pretty much the same thing. Here's your headline, more characters for a good offer description message. Yes, you want your business name. Choose from a variety of different question types. Pretty much everything you see right here is going to be pre-filled from the user's Google profile. But then you have additional questions. If you need to pre-qualify the user a little bit more, make them work a little bit, and they actually have to type something in. Now, besides that, you can add additional questions, choose from a variety of different industries, or you can search for specific questions. Once you have your form filled out, there is the submission or confirmation message. Let them know what they can expect next with the option to send them to your website whether it's to actually download an asset, watch a video, or just explore your site to learn more about the company while they're waiting for you to get back to them, understand that's all an option. Have your call to action. Interesting to note is that you do have the option to integrate these directly with a CRM. So just search for your CRM. There are some options here. All the big ones are on here. HubSpot, Salesforce, Pardot, Zoho, and many, many other ones. Sometimes you're gonna need Zapier to integrate a CRM to Google Ads, but it's possible. So when someone fills out a lead form, it can automatically get sent to your CRM. If you don't connect a CRM, you can download the leads. I'll show you how to do that. Cancel out of this. Here we see the option to download a lead. Understand that any leads you get from a lead form that aren't automatically sent to a CRM, they only live in Google Ads for 30 days, and then they're deleted. So if you have to do this manually, understand that you'll want to keep checking, making sure that you're actually following up with these leads and they don't get lost and you're potentially hurting your brand reputation because you're promising something and not following up. But okay, you have your lead form set up for whichever campaigns you want to run. Next, you will want to confirm that they're showing up as a goal. So to do that, of course, we want to go to goals and then just click on conversions and then summary. If I just jump down, you may have other lead form conversions that you have created. To my knowledge, we have not changed the name on this one for this client, but the most important part is looking for a conversion source. And this one we see it's Google hosted. So this conversion action is a form submit from any lead form asset that we created within this account. Also, it's important that you have this setting set to primary. So it counts within your main conversions column. If you're creating a campaign that is trying to optimize towards this action, you need to have it as a primary action. But if you need to update any of the settings, you can just click on the conversion action, update and save, and then you can move on to campaign creation. So we'll head back to campaigns, and then let's start creating a new campaign. Click on it to open, and of course we want new campaign. Since our goal is to have lead forms filled out, of course we want leads. And then when you're looking at your conversion goals, make sure that the Google hosted lead form action for your lead form assets is included within this section. And then you can click continue, scrolling down a little bit more, Responsive search ads are, of course, search. And scrolling down again, this is the important part. Selecting the way you want to reach your goal, and that is going to be lead form submissions. Yes, we understand that you have lead forms on your website, but if you want to get people to fill out the form on your website, you'd still want website visits because they need to visit your website first before they can fill out the form that's on your website. This lead form submission option is the Google Ads lead form assets. Okay, so then I'm going to click continue. 
choose your campaign name, continue again. I'm not gonna go through a whole campaign setup. I'm gonna try to get through all of these settings as quick as possible. So choose your bid strategy, select your customer acquisition settings. I already went ahead, uncheck both of these boxes, location, language, your broad match settings, your assets, click on more settings and scroll down, update those. Let's continue to move on. I'm gonna skip this part for now. Go up, edit your ad group name. If you want to, start getting keyword suggestions, but I'm gonna scroll down here, make sure I pause the preview. And then when you're filling in your ad, here's where you would select your lead form. Sorry if this looks a little funky, I am zoomed in so the text wouldn't be super small. But then you would just go ahead and fill in the rest of your ad, add in all the other elements that you want, and then notice that site links can still apply, as well as any of your other assets. So if you did have site link extensions, or maybe at the campaign or account level, you have price extensions, which also have URLs that send people to the website. Understand there are those options that have some other ways to send them to the website. However, your main headline, when someone clicks on it, will trigger the lead form to open up. Also, if I scroll back up a little bit, there was an option for the phone number, or if you have that set up at the account level, that's another action where a user can click on that asset or extension, and then it'll call instead of opening up a lead form. So is it 100% sending them to a lead form? No. If you only want that option to have them go to the lead form, don't include the call extensions, don't include site link extensions, and within your setting, have the Google hosted submit lead form goal as the only thing to optimize towards. Here, see, it's giving me the warning. I did include the other conversions in there in the setup. So again, the lead form will only show up for the headline clicks, but then you would jump down, click next, review everything, and save it. Now, since I was using a client account for this video, I did not save the campaign I just created, but I did open up campaign level settings for one of their campaigns. If you do launch a campaign where you're only showing lead form ads for your responsive search ads and you wanna turn it off, you can do that in the campaign settings. Skip everything and go straight to additional settings and there you will see lead form setting. For now it says no option set because we didn't save the campaign. If you open this up, this box will already be checked if you did launch your campaign with lead forms only. You would just need to go and uncheck this box and then make sure whatever final URLs you are using within your responsive search ads in the entire campaign will send users to the proper pages. So maybe you're looking to collect more first party data, maybe get more people to download a white paper, get them signed up for your newsletter. This might be an option worth testing. Understand the less information you ask, the easier it is to get some sort of quantity with this type of ad. Or maybe you know that some of your landing pages on your website aren't great. Yes, I would recommend fixing that, but in the meantime, maybe you can have a better conversion rate sending them to a form. In addition to that, it's one less step. Instead of clicking an ad, going to a page, filling out a form, if your offer is enticing enough, just get rid of the extra step. Show them the form right away, especially if it's search and they were searching for something specifically, that you have an answer to, maybe it's easier for them to convert right away. I don't expect any account to use this as a primary action for their search campaigns. However, it's good to know that it's an option if collecting first party data is a priority for your business. If you have any more questions on lead form assets and how to attach them to search campaigns, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.